Okay, we have everything from doctors to crackheads in our church, right? Mm -hmm. Lawyers and drug addicts and, you know, we have a, a ministry where women go to strip clubs and minister to the strippers. Every stripper in San, in San Diego has received a gift bag, pink Bible, pink bag from our women. And the lady who heads that up used to be a call girl, $30,000 a month. Well, that's her background. Well, you know what? God saved her and how he's using it in a powerful way. Mm -hmm. We got ex-drug addicts, ex-cons, ex-everything doing stuff for God in, in, in the uh, community. Mm -hmm. um, and that, that's the blessing for me to see God take a broken life. I used to be on cocaine. I'm the chief broken person. Fix you up, not to perfect, to every role in process, and say, now I want, I want to use you for something good for, my, for me. Yeah. It may not be good enough for the world. You know, if uh, we have Miss California in our church, and we'll get yeah. to that in a minute. But if we were to look at all our backgrounds, we all got garbage. Oh, yeah. You know, when I was 17, you know, they got pictures of when she was 17 and stuff. Man, I, I got stuff doing stuff illegal at 17. Mm -hmm. Okay, and your point is, you know, but today I want to walk with Jesus. Yeah. And so God today says, I'm ready. Let's go, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And he can take you just right where you are, clean you up, and give you a whole new life. And you can use those abilities and those gifts and those talents that you were born with and actually use them to to be a great a great impact for the kingdom of God. Yes. Yeah, because the firemen, we did the same type of thing. They yeah. are so blessed. Oh, yes. E even going up to uh, uh, people in the military, if you see mm -hmm. someone in a, in a uniform, in a anywhere, airport, mall, go up to them and say thank you. They're putting their life on the line for us every day. Right. And, you know, we enjoy all these freedoms at their expense. Mm -hmm. Just to say, you know, thank you for putting your life on the line. Folks, wherever you're watching from, whatever church you go to, anywhere in the world, you can always do something to serve your community, and that is a key to leading them to Christ, mm -hmm. pointing mm -hmm. them to the truth. Right. All right, now let's, 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 let's make a complete U-turn here and go into another area in the community in which you're serving, but you're also making huge impact, and yet it's controversial at the same time. Yeah, yeah. This, this, uh, this Prop 8 issue yeah. here in California, and then also you are part of another big country that came up not long ago with the Miss California and the Miss, uh, Miss USA pageant, yeah. Carrie Prejean, because she is actually a member of your church. Mm -hmm. Tell us first <laughs> about the story with Carrie and, and how she's been uh, such a bold stand for Christ, and then we'll get into the Prop 8 yeah. thing. Well, I was sitting at home. I don't know where I was. I was watching <laughs> the Miss... I, I watched on the news her give her answer at Miss California... A Miss USA pageant. Mm -hmm. I don't watch the pageants. <laughs> Me neither. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but I happen to see this part. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but I'm watching it, and I'm looking at this girl say, uh, I believe in marriage between a man and a woman. And, mm -hmm. and, and then I said, Miss California. I'm like, man, I wish you went to my church. You know so everybody, every pastor said that. I wish you went to my church. Just to have someone yeah. in your church that was that bold. Yeah, just standing for Christ. So the next day, my wife and I fly to New York, and we get to New York, and our plane got diverted. It was a rain, and we're sitting in this other airport. And I get a, a message that there's an issue at the church, and it has to do with Miss California. And I'm thinking, I don't even know her. What does that got to do with me? Mm -hmm. Well, she goes to the church, and, wow. she's, and she's flying to New York at the same time. I'm sitting there in New York. Mm. And she's coming to deal with the media because of her answer. They said, you got to go to New York and go on, on TV. Mm. Meanwhile, she's on the plane. I never met this girl, never knew her name. She's on the plane praying to God, God, give me a sign that I'm supposed to go do this. Mm. So I text her and say, this is Miles, Pastor of the Rock, just in case she really doesn't go there, you know. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because some people say they go, but they don't really yeah, go. I hear you. So I said, this is Miles. We have about 10,000 of those at my church. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Everybody goes yeah. to Thomas Thomas Road, right? So I said, this is Miles. Call me when you get to New York. I'm in New York. She's praying, and we've never met. Mm -hmm. She gets off the plane and reads this text in, in Kennedy Airport, falls to the ground, starts crying. She calls me 2 a.m. when she got there. I'm just getting to my room because we were four hours late because of the rain. Mm. Her hotel is 11 blocks away, a half a mile in, in Manhattan, which is a half a mile, which is nothing. For all, I don't know if you've been to Manhattan. It's ginormous, mm. okay? Mm. She's right up the street. That's amazing. So she calls me at the, whole, at the, at the uh, airport, then at the hotel at 3 a.m. And I said, when are they coming to get you for your first interview? She says, in three hours. <laughs> so we were both, up, I'm, I'm up all night in my bed thinking, okay, I got to help her with these interviews. Yeah. I go over there, my wife's in bed, I'm sneaking out of the room, it's pitch black, it's 5.30 in the morning, and I go, Debbie, to my wife, I'm going to meet Miss California. And my wife goes, okay, bye. I'm like, yeah, that's all I got a good wife. No problem. <laughs> I got a godly wife. <laughs> yeah, you do. <laughs> so I go over there, and her and her mom are there, and, and I was with her for the two days, coaching her through these interviews, because I had been through the Prop 8 stuff for, mm -hmm. for the whole year previous. 
And that's how we met, and we've been uh, connected for ever since that day, every day, dealing with all the stuff she's going through. And she is going through a lot of things, but I think uh, one thing that we can say, regardless of all the controversy, is this. When you make a stand for Christ, you will get arrows thrown at you from every direction. Uh, people do not like the offense of the gospel. Um, and, and you know what? We're, we're getting a little short on our time, Miles. So what I'd love for you to do is share with us specifically how people can be bold for their faith, how they can be fearless for their stand for Christ, and, and really, really live every moment for them. And, and using Carrie as an example, uh, give us some, some brief words of advice on how we can do those kind of things. And then mm -hmm. I also want to ask you real quickly before we leave about uh, a, a couple of the books that you've written and where we can find them and things like okay, that. Okay, okay. Uh, the first thing is that to love God, which is our number one commandment, means yeah. to obey God. And when she was on that stage, they asked her the question. She said, do I, do I give the politically correct answer and disobey God? Mm -hmm. Or do I obey God and say what, what the Bible says? Mm -hmm. And every day we have to make a decision. Am I going to obey God? Bottom line, with how I treat somebody, with how I react to something. Uh, am I going to obey God? And we have to always understand that there's a spiritual battle. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood. It's not people. It's spiritual forces in, of darkness. Uh, but great is he who's in us than he who's in the world. And so if every day we understand we have to obey, we understand there's going to be opposition. It's the devil's job to distract us from obeying. Mm -hmm. And he's very good at it, but God is better if we trust him. We lose if we try to fight the devil on our own. And so for every day for us to say, I have to trust in Jesus. You know, if I'm weak, I'm strong. And, and if I'm constantly prayerful, praying without ceasing, listening, uh, leaning on him, uh, surrendering my life into his arms, um, I'm going to be fine. I, and it's going to help me obey. Uh, and, when the, and when the attacks come, you know, the, the reason the devil is so focused on her, he, she has his undivided attention, yeah. is because she's a threat to him. She is a, the next generation. And, mm -hmm. she is, and, and I think they overplayed their heart. They, they treat her too harshly. They should have just let her go away. Mm -hmm. Because this fight is just starting. And she's not beat down. We're, we're reloading. Mm. Trust me. The barrels are getting ready to blow up, <laughs> let me tell you. So... Uh, all the people who watched all the stuff she went through, all the stuff that her, people were saying about her were a lot of lies. I was involved mm -hmm. in a lot of negotiations with her pageant people uh, and all the stuff they just trashed her and said about her that mm -hmm. she did. You know, it's a lot of, a lot of not untruth in that. So, but the, the God put her in that position because he trusted she would do something good with it. And that good is yet to start. So mm -hmm. it, there's a lot of ministry left in her, a lot Praise of God. fighting that dog, and it's going to be very encouraging. Awesome. And you're going to be a big part of that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and you know what? God is, uh, God has given you a platform as well with, with such a huge congregation in San Diego. And, uh, I mean, you were on Larry King last night. You're, you're, you're deeply involved in the, in the current issues of America, but they're really affecting, you know, uh, us worldwide. And so I just want to encourage you, man, keep doing what you're doing. Keep standing strong for him. How can we find your ministry online and how can we be in touch with you so we can support you in what you're doing? You just go to therocksandiego.org, okay. therocksandiego.org, and everything's there, therocksandiego.org. The Rock San Diego. If you're in San Diego, org. come visit us. Yes. The church is the bomb. The people, our staff is fantastic. The people in our church are fantastic, the volunteers. And I'm just honored to be and their you, pastor. you couldn't be in a more beautiful city. You know what I'm five saying? Five services a Sunday, right? 8, 10, 12, 5, and 7. <laughs> 8, 10, 12, <laughs> five, 5, and 7. And a nap between 2 and 4. <laughs> a nap between 2 and 3. 2.30 and 4 o'clock. That's there right. There you go. Hey, let's welcome Miles McPherson one more time and thank him so much. Thank, thank you, buddy. I appreciate it. God bless you, buddy. Thank you, dear man. <laughs> thank you. Miles McPherson. Still in great shape, about 2% body fat.